Hey guys, it's Doug Giles again, back with Creative Restorations. Now today's video is going to be a little different. Again, we're going to go back to the podcast type video. And uh, instead of a pool table video, I know some of you guys have your heart set on more pool table videos, but well, don't worry, we'll get to them. Uh, today's video is going to be a podcast video, and it's going to be about Alan Edmund shoes again. Uh, and I know I've done the other podcast with Preston Soto and Steve Dudoklian. Well, today's video is going to be very interesting for quite a few of you guys that are part of the Alan Edmonds group. Uh, today we're going to be joined by, uh, joined by Steve and Andy Bond, otherwise known as DeBondo1 on eBay. Now, in case you guys don't, if you're coming and you're new to the channel, if you're not familiar with Alan Edmonds shoes, I highly, highly encourage anyone to get into Alan Edmonds shoes. They are fantastic American-made shoes. Um, and Steve and Andy, they, uh, they sell factory, uh, factory returns uh, on eBay at significantly lower prices than you would find these shoes brand new. And most of the time, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the shoes trust me i wear a pair of them every single day uh pair i wear to uh, like the pair i have on today is a pair of allen admins alpines i actually got them from steve and andy so uh anyway without further ado let's get them on the line and when i come back we'll have steve and andy with us and we'll answer some questions all right so we are back now with steve and andy Better known as DeBondo1 from eBay, the source where most of the guys from the Allen Edmonds group get their, get uh, a lot of their shoes. So, uh, look, I, I'm going to let you guys go ahead. Why don't y'all introduce yourselves first of all? Baby, go ahead. <laughs> okay, she always makes me go first. So <laughs> my, my my name is Steve. As you guys know, my last name is Bond. Um, the Bondo one, it was actually, if, if, if later on in the conversation, if you, uh, you guys would like to know where the Bondo one came from, Doug, I'd be happy to share that with you. That's actually, so, I, have a, I have some notes here, and that's actually one of the questions I was going to ask you. Well, great. Well, so... We actually are living in the Tri-Cities of Tennessee. We, we lived in um, Charlotte for 23 years, and three years ago, we moved the business, and we moved to the Tri-Cities area. Cool. Cool. Yep. All right, Andy, you want to go ahead? And I'm going to let and... Andy tell you how many kids and stuff we have. So, okay. Andy, I'm going to leave the rest of you home. Well, we've got four kids, and... Uh... We actually, I like to see, so we lived in Charlotte, North Carolina for 23 years. Mm -hmm. And then we had an opportunity to move to uh, the Tri-Cities, and we landed in Kingsport, Tennessee, three years ago. And it is beautiful here. If uh, if anyone loves to hike, this is the place to come. It's just beautiful here to hike and uh, enjoy nature. And um, anyhow, we've enjoyed living here, and it's it's been great. We, we actually... Ended up um, moving to Kingsport, not knowing that our repairman was going to be five minutes away from our house, which oh, wow. which is kind of a blessing, and he's wonderful. So um, it's Shoe Wiz, is, uh, Harold is his name, right down the street from us, so he's great. And That's fantastic. We're lucky to have him. Yeah. All right. So yeah, but we've got four kids, and, and we're proud parents of all four of them. So. That's, that's great. Boys and girls, all boys, all girls. Three boys and one angel is what we say. And Steve was telling <laughs> me that all of all of the kids have left the nest now, huh? Just about. Just about. Yeah, just about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we won't pry too much. Yeah, we've got. Yeah, we've got our youngest one, Doug. That he's actually starting a new job in June, mm -hmm. and so he'll be leaving the nest then. So oh wow! We'll wow. officially be empty nesters after June. Yeah. Are you, are you prepared for it? Uh, you know, we'll miss him. We'll mom. miss him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, of course you'll miss him, but have y'all have plans for like you know going off on vacations and stuff like that, and <laughs> kind of rubbing we it in with him. That, we we can't be empty nesters yet because we still have a dog. Okay, and she's like she's like our fifth child. We love her like a 
child. So. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Without further ado, let's go ahead. I'm going to start asking some of these questions. Now, I've got some of my own, and, and you know, I kind of went over some of these questions with Steve earlier, and I thought of a couple of other things, too, and... and uh, so I hope I don't throw you off too much with some of my questions here, but, uh, I'm going to start off with, uh, how did you, how did you come up with the name DeBondo one? Well, in, in college, my last name being Bond, mm-hmm. a lot of my college roommates developed a nickname for me and the nickname was DeBondo, D-A-B-O-N-D-O. And so when in 2001, when we went to create a eBay name, I typed in DeBondo, but unfortunately someone had already used it. Oh. So the next logical choice is to add a one to it, which we ended up getting DeBondo one. So uh, okay. it all derived from a nickname in college. We added the one to it because eBay didn't have DeBondo. And, you know, we never thought that DeBondo won when we created that store back in 2001 would um would 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 be as popular as it is now as you, far as having a shoe business that people knew us by the bondo one. Yeah, it's a it's amazing how how things like that happen. I mean, I'm also an eBay seller. Um and when I got into to selling on eBay, all I did was billiard related stuff. And, you know, mm-hmm. I've 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 been in the billiard industry now for almost thirty years. And, uh, you know, my username is billiard 74, but Mm -hmm. nowadays I don't sell anything on there related to billiard products. It's all, Mm -hmm. uh, sharpening stones and, and, uh, holsters, you know, leather work type stuff. So. But you don't want to change your username because that's what you build up your reputation, your reputation under, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, and yeah. my wife and I, similar to you guys, I mean, we have our own little side business that we do where we make holsters and stuff like that. And we go by Double J Ranch and we stamp everything with Double J Ranch. But I don't really want to go back in there and change everything to Double J Ranch now. So, because mm-hmm. everybody's yeah. gotten, gotten to know it as Billiard 74. But anyway, so... Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, you, you know, you guys have uh, a pretty decent selection of shoes. Uh, how do you come across all of these shoes? Steve, Andy, do you want that one? You can take it. Okay. So we actually have a 20-year relationship with Alan Edmonds. So a lot of people will ask us, they'll send us questions, and they'll say, where do you get your inventory? Mm -hmm. And we always joke around, and we say, well, if we really tell you that, we're going to have to shoot you because that's a secret. (laughs) But we're going to go ahead and divulge that secret now. So we actually buy all of our shoes directly from Allen Mm Edmonds. They are store returns for the most part. I would say 80% of what we buy are first-quality store returns, Mm -hmm. and then the other 20% are going to be brand new shoes that they're either seconds or third something happened to them during the manufacturing process Mm -hmm. and then when that happens andy does a great job at identifying what that issue issue is Mm -hmm. and then we list them we list them with that with that defect on them right so but we buy them directly from alan edmonds to to answer your question okay and i you know i've bought several pairs of shoes from you guys over the years and you know the 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 quality of the shoes, I don't, I don't think that, that I've really had, well, I've had, I had one pair of boots that I bought. They were obviously factory seconds. There was a wrinkle on the side of the boot. And I just, I, all I did was take a, uh, a, a heavy metal pick and went in and separated the, the glue that was holding that wrinkle in place. And now those shoes look every bit as good as, as any mm. other pair of shoes out there. There was really nothing wrong yeah. with them. So, but, uh, you know, had I gone out there and, and, and bought them directly from Allen Edmonds and paid full retail, we're looking at over $400 for a pair of shoes. And the, well, I, I won't say what I paid for them, but the savings was substantially it was a substantial savings. So, you know, and, and I appreciate right. that. And I know that there's a lot of, a lot of other people out there that appreciate it as well. So, well, let me just say, we think that we have the best customers in the entire 
world, or at least on eBay. So <laughs> well, and, we and, love our customers. And uh, but I think when you start getting into the the higher end shoes like that, and and you know, Allen Edmonds aren't necessarily high end shoes, but they are definitely mm-hmm. higher end than say something like Bass or Florsheim or you know something along those lines. And and you yeah. really do you you attract a, a you know a clientele that um, they they handle they tend to handle things in a bit more classy manner you know and and mm-hmm. yeah that does make for good customers so but let me ask you this do you guys actually do y'all ship worldwide? We do. We ship. Uh, we actually use eBay Global Shipping. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually just started that too during the pandemic because when we were shipping uh, just through USPS, uh, we were having trouble with uh, certain countries not accepting accepting them at customs, and they would get stopped, mm-hmm. and then they would get sent back to us, and then we were eating the shipping because USPS was not giving us reimbursements for the shipping. So. We actually went with eBay Global Shipping, and we've been really happy with that. And uh, just this week, actually, on one of our feedbacks, somebody said something to the effect of excellent global shipping time or something like yeah. that. Like international shipping time was extremely fast. And, um, yeah, so that we do ship worldwide, and uh, we have a lot of customers all over the world. So. Mm. Oh, and, and and eBay's global shipping really is the, the, it's fantastic. You're sending it. Uh, I would assume you're sending it to Erlinger, Kentucky. Is that right? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's and right. and everything gets shipped out from there. And the great thing for eBay sellers. And look, I'm I'm not the biggest eBay fan out there. I'm not a I'm not a huge eBay fanboy. Not because of sellers or buyers, but because of eBay themselves. Uh, right. but, but with their global shipping program, it really has made it great because you, you as a seller are responsible to get it to the global shipper uh, or to the shipping hub. And you're pretty much hands off from there. Once you get it to them, right. you're pretty much done with it, huh? Yeah. You're protected right. at that point right. as a seller. Right. Now, let me ask yeah. you this. How, how, how have your experiences with eBay themselves been? Um, you want me to take that, Andy? Sure. So, so I'll start with this. Andy can add, add to it. But um, we were, when we first started, we were very happy with eBay. Mm-hmm. I mean, we felt like that the, they put the seller first. Mm-hmm. We felt like that all of our items had good visibility. We felt like that it was just a wonderful place to, you know, to sell an item and to sell goods. Mm-hmm. But we do feel like that, especially over the last, I'd say, five years, we've struggled. Yeah. Because they keep changing rules of the game, and we really feel like that they favor the buyers more than they favor the sellers. Right. And we've been on here for 20 years with them, and, and we've made them a lot of money. Right. But we still feel like that they just, you know, they protect the, the buyers more than they do the sellers. But not only that, you know, they force you into their payment platform. Right. They now have that managed payment system. Yep. Um, they now force you to pay extra on top of the 10% that we were already paying them to mm-hmm. do the promoted listings. If you want, if you want visibility for your items, you got to pay extra and do the, you know, the, do the extra promoted listings. And so by the time you're finished with eBay, you're probably 20%. Yeah. Um, when you sell an item. And so it almost feels like extortion, right? It does. It does. Now, um, I'm going to let Andy speak to their customer service because I feel like their customer service has been pretty good. Andy, do you want to share anything around that? Yeah, their customer service is great. I would for us it is. We have an anchor store subscription. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, we get to call directly into a customer customer support um that just deals with anchor stores. Right. So I feel like that they're always willing to help us. And so yeah, I can't complain on that on that line but i i would like to say that we are actively looking at creating a website you and should, so that you really should yeah. um you know i yeah I it's, have a, it's a, a big deal when you've got 2300 items that you're going to transfer over all the pictures and right and data and everything so it's just finding the, the right match for us well you know? I, I i tell you if you're doing that kind of volume with ebay um 
it, it would definitely be in your best interest to, to have a website. I know that, uh, like my sales, uh, for, for sharpening stones, um, you know, just uh, the only thing I use is, is PayPal for their, basically as a merchant service to process credit yeah. cards. And, and I know I'm getting off topic here a little bit, but that's okay. Um, but my website, I think I only pay, I pay less than 3% for them to process the credit cards. And that's the only thing I pay. That's it. So for somebody that like you guys that are doing, you know, much, much higher volume than what I would do, um, the, the savings, the monthly savings alone would, would more than cover it. I think that's a really good idea. I think you guys should do it. Doug, yeah. I have a question for you around. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Andy. No, it's okay. Uh, I was just going to say that it, it's just a matter of finding the right fit for somebody to create it for us. Because right. we, we've we spoken, we've even had somebody over here to the house that um, to deal with trying to figure out how to put it all together. But uh, we just didn't think that they were the right fit for what we needed. Right. Um, so it's just a matter of finding that right person to, to create it for us. Well, um, I, I, so, I, I, I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't hesitate on, I mean, not, not necessarily for them, but that's, that's, that would be, you know, top priority for me is get, getting a website up because the, the, the yeah. savings, I mean, going, if you guys are paying close to 20%, to eBay after everything's all said and done to reduce that, to put that extra 17% back in your pocket. And I know that you wouldn't actually put 17 back in your pocket because that, uh, that actually opens the door to be able to negotiate or, or give your customers a, a better price even still, uh, and pass exactly. that, pass that savings on to your customers. So exactly. So if there's anybody listening out there to this, um, and you have <laughs> anybody you can recommend as a website, let us know. Well, I'll we put uh, I'll I'll put some contact information. Uh, I'll get your you guys contact information. I'm going to put it in the description down below. Uh, so if anybody is interested in either a buying a pair of shoes, uh, or b you know wants to wants to work with you guys for a website, you know they they'll have an avenue to get in touch with you. So that would be great. Okay, uh, now let's see. There's something that, uh, that uh, there's a question that keeps popping up on, on the Allen Edmonds enthusiast group every so often where guys buy a pair of shoes, uh, from eBay. And obviously it comes from you guys. And there's a, there's a stamp on the bottom of the shoe that says, uh, no warranty. It's right there on the soles. Uh -huh. Why don't you tell us about that? Hey, can okay. I do that? Sure. So what that no warranty means, that was something that when we got into this 20 years ago, Alan Edmonds had to have a way that people could not buy these shoes from us and then try to take these shoes into a retail store to get a, to get a refund. Mm -hmm. And so this is protecting them from that happening. So it identifies the shoe. Mm -hmm. The no warranty, a lot of people think it means that they're seconds or they're thirds mm -hmm. or they're factory defects. It right. doesn't mean any of that. Right. This is just an identifier for Allen Edmonds and for any of the retail stores that sell Allen Edmonds. If someone should buy from us mm -hmm. and try to bring that shoe into them for a refund, they're going to know that they don't. They will not take that shoe and give any type of refund, store credit, or anything. Gotcha. So it's it's just it's it's. A, I think it's a, a great idea on their part right. actually coming up with that. But that doesn't now that doesn't mean that you guys don't warranty them for for whatever the whatever eBay's warranty period is, right? That's correct. We actually offer thirty day returns. So okay. If someone yeah, if someone buys a pair of shoes from us mm -hmm. and they don't wear them, but they try them on and just say they can't, you know, get them in the mail to us quick enough, say they're going out of the country or whatever, mm -hmm. we will actually take a take a return from them up to thirty days. Right. Okay, that makes From the sense. Time they buy it. That makes sense. All right, uh, let's see. I want to start asking some of the some of the questions that some of the guys on the Allen Edmonds group, because uh, I I told them that we're gonna we were gonna be doing this podcast, and mm -hmm. uh, asked them to submit questions that they had. Um, the first one is from Thomas Jimenez, and he wants to know how did y'all get started buying the Allen Edmonds? What well, what was that process <laughs> like? We get asked well, that question a lot. Steve's answered this um, 
to a lot of our friends, but <laughs> this will be interesting. Yeah, so I'll try to I'll try to give you a quick version of it. But we were living in Charlotte. There was a suburb, a real suburb of Charlotte in Huntersville, mm -hmm. and there was another city called Mooresville. And there was an older gentleman, and he was selling the store returns of Allen Emmons and also Johnson and Murphy's. Mm -hmm. And so all the businessmen in the area, you know, of course, I, you know how word spreads. Well, everyone found out that you could go there and buy Allen Edmonds, mm -hmm. and you know, and he gave pretty good deal on them. So that's where all the businessmen went to find their pre-owned pre Allen Edmonds. And so we did that for years. And so I became friends with him. I became friends with his wife. And I remember going in there one day, one day and his wife was in there and they were kind of boxing everything up. And I was like, Deanna, what happened? And she said, well, she said, um, my husband passed away and we're going to close the store. And she said, would you be interested in buying us out? And so she gave me a price. I went home, Andy and I talked about it, and we decided that we would buy their inventory. Well, not only did we buy the inventory, we also bought the contacts of wow. Alan Edmonds and Johnson and & Murphy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it took us probably three or four months. To, that's when we opened our eBay store. So it took us three or four months to, you know, deplete the inventory. And then I remember making the call to Alan Edmonds to that contact, and the gentleman's name at the time was Peter Cragen. He was the uh, he was over all North American sales. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was speaking with Peter, and he said, "Sir, he says we have a mile, we have a line a mile long of people wanting to get into these warrants." He said it's going to be at least two years before we get to you. Wow. And so I, you know, I said, "Well, thank you," and I hung up and. Um, Andy will attest, I'm not a guy that gives up easily. And so I um, got his email address and I sent him this really nice email by telling him, I said, Peter, I said, we really value the Allen Edmonds brand. I said, and I said a couple other things that I can't remember, but the closing line I said, I said, Peter, I've got four kids to put through college. And if there's any way that we could keep this, you know, keep this account, that would be great. And I kid you not. One or two days later, I get a phone call from him on my cell phone, and he says, Steve, this is Peter Cragen from Allen Evans. He says, it was the four kids comment that got me. He says, I actually have kids myself. <laughs> yeah. And so that was the start of us being able to buy direct from Allen Edmonds. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was around 2001, whenever we started that. Wow. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> now, that, well, that leads me to a question. Do you guys still deal with Johnson & Murphy? Um, we do not. Or, we, or um, any other brands for that matter? No, we strictly do Allen Edmonds just because pre-COVID, we were getting so many Allen Edmonds, and we're a two-person operation here. So, okay. you know, it's, uh, it, it keeps Andy and, I, Andy and I very busy. And so we felt like that we had a great brand. We were doing Johnson & Murphy's, but our supplier on the Johnson and Murphy's, um, he started kind of doing it himself. And plus, to be honest with you, the Johnson and Murphy's just didn't hold a candle to the Allen Edmonds as far as what we got out of them. Right. And so we decided that we would put all of our time and effort into the Allen Edmonds since they they brought us more money. Sure. Uh, and we I'd, dropped the Johnson and Murphy's. That that's completely understandable. That's completely understandable. Um, you know that that's this actually leads me to to the next question. Um, let's see, this is, that was actually a question by Sean, Sean Benet from, from, uh, the Allen Edmonds group, uh, about whether or not you had any, any other brands. Um, do you have, what other brands do you have or how, how many do you have in your personal collection? And I, I'm guessing this is going to be a, a question more directed to Steve. Yes. Yeah. That would be a question for Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think our buyers will be happy to know that when we're opening up these boxes, we never know what's in them. We, right. They usually come to us. We get 24, 24 cases at a time, and in each case is 13 pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. So I think our buyers will be happy to know that we leave the really good stuff to them. And Steve doesn't – I don't necessarily wear the, the, the best stuff, but occasionally I'll sandbag and I'll put a, a nice pair aside. But some of my favorites are – 
Of course, I like the walnut strand. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the alpine chucka boots. Doug, I know you do as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you like, new boot, you like the Alpine cap toes, don't you, Doug? I, I do. I do. I actually, I bought a pair for myself. And when Amy and I got married, we got a, we got such a fantastic uh, deal from the minister. This was actually my brother's minister there in South Carolina. He he performed the whole ceremony, and and we had the hall and or the yeah the hall there. Uh, and he only he only charged us like two hundred two hundred and fifty dollars for everything. Yeah. So, wow. yeah. So the last time Amy and I went up there, uh, he and I got to talking about Alan Edmonds and, and my brother has gotten him into the Alan Edmonds as, as well. And he saw my Alpines and he said, he says, wow, those are some really nice boots. And I got to thinking about it. I said, I'm thinking, I know where I can get him a pair. So I just told him, I said, you like those shoes? I'm going to get you a pair. So I did. I, I <laughs> contacted you guys and I got a pair of them for him. Uh, and, and now, uh, uh, trying to get my brother over into, uh, wearing boots. Uh, they're just, mm-hmm. they're so much more comfortable, but, uh, yeah, the, these Alpines are extremely comfortable. I wear them almost every day. And yeah. I don't, I don't know if you have any of the cat toes. I know you've got the chuckas, but I don't know if you have the cat toes. Do you? No, that's correct. Yep. I have, I have the chucka boot. Um, and then there's a new boot, the uh, Park City. Some people may may recognize that. It's a brand new style yeah. that Alan Evans just came out with. And so uh, this winter, I wore some Park Cities, and they felt they felt pretty good. They, they're, a, they're a durable, comfortable shoe. Um, the Dalton, I like them on it. Yeah. The, the Dalton is a really nice, classy that you can it dress is. up. It is. And I know there's a lot. Of, you can dress it up or you can dress it down. Mm-hmm. Probably my favorite boot that I wear the most is a Higgins Mill. Yep. I tend to like to wear those with my jeans. Mm-hmm. And then as far as dress shoes, the, the Park Avenue, the Fifth Avenue, the Arizo Rosers. Then I like the McAllisters, the Jefferson, and then the um, the Strandmark. I have a pair of brown Strandmark that I like to wear with jeans or khakis. Or, um, so I think those, those are, are the ones just, you wear the most. Probably. You wear those the most, yeah. Yeah, I've got a pair of brown, uh, well, let's see, I've got walnut strands. Uh, I've got a pair of brown strand mocks, uh, the jingle bell mocks. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, my wife teases me because I have so many, I have more shoes than her. Um, (laughs) I really do. Uh, Let's see. um, so how, I will say something, Doug. The, there are women that are actually on the Allen Evans enthusiasts. There are. I believe they wear the Allen Evans. They do. So um, I don't have any personally, but I know there are a lot of women that enjoy them. So. Well, the, the you know the strand mocks are are, are great for women. The, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I could see I could very easily see see a woman wearing strand mocks. You know, or or even the strands for that matter, with the right outfit. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, I could see where where. You know, men's dress shoes. Tip, you know what what would typically go as men's dress shoes. Um, it wouldn't be every woman's cup of tea, but uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm cool with it. You know, it's fine with me. Um, let's see. So, how how about how many pairs of shoes do you have in your in your personal collection, Steve? Oh, I would say I'm going to say between fifteen and twenty. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. No. Okay. Now, but he uh, has a wife that goes into his closet, and I raid it every now and then to see the ones that he doesn't wear. And I, I, I take him to the warehouse. <laughs> well, you know, it's like me. I, I have a pair of uh, Park Avenues, and and I, 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 I love those shoes. Uh, but I, I, I don't really get all that dressed up all that often to justify wearing mm-hmm. them. You know, um, and and. If it were me advising somebody as to what to get as a first pair of shoes, I'd probably I'd probably say the walnut strands would be the most versatile. Would Would you tend mm-hmm. to agree? Yeah, they're all. Awesome. I, I love that. Yeah. That's probably my favorite dress shoe. I love it. Yeah. I love the walnut strand. It, it really is. It's such a classy design and everything, and and it's just it, it fits so well and and comfortable yeah. and just just a great shoe. You know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sean Benet. Sean Benet. He asked again uh, another question. He's got a, he's got several questions here. Uh, what's the largest order that you that any one person has ever made on pairs of shoes? Not price. 
uh, but but largest number of pairs in one purchase. Go ahead, I'm Angie. thinking back to a customer that um, I believe from Sweden that he got like 20 wow. pairs of shoes <laughs> wow. all on his size. Yeah. But uh, we actually have a customer that came along this week and just in this week alone, he bought his sixth pair. He's in Kansas. Mm-hmm. And I think it was his, either his fifth or sixth pair just this week. And he bought a beautiful pair of Landon's. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they were chili Landon's or Burgundy. I can't remember. But, yeah, so he's, he's doing quite well. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, like I said, I, I, don't ha- I don't have the kind of funds that I can afford to, to- you know, shell out for 20 pairs at once or even six pairs in a week. Um, but it'd be, you know, nice to have those kind of problems, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, have, have you ever had a customer that you've had to cut off because the, because you thought they had a problem kind of like how a bartender does? <laughs> I, I think that's a great question. When I, when I read it, I chuckled. Um, well, we're not like bartenders. We do not cut buyers off. So they can feel as comfortable <laughs> buying as many pairs of Alan Evans <laughs> off of us. Now, I will tell you, Doug, we did have a customer one time that we had to, we had to cut him off. We had to actually block him. And this was when we first got started doing this. Uh, this guy was in Georgia somewhere, but he would buy four or five pairs of shoes a week. Mm-hmm. And he did that consistently for about two months. Mm-hmm. And then he would return every pair of shoes. I don't think he kept one. And I think he I think he bought like 30 total pair of shoes off of us. And he returned every single pair of shoes to us. And quite honestly, that's we don't mind taking returns mm-hmm. when they're individually or if someone buys three or whatever. Right. But when you get 30 pair of shoes back at one time, it becomes an administrative nightmare. And so it was just, we felt like that perhaps he realized he might've had a problem. Mm-hmm. And so I think by us blocking him, we were probably doing him a favor, <laughs> maybe saving him a divorce or, or, or something. But um, yeah, we, 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 we blocked him because that was a problem when we got 30 pairs of shoes back, we had to refund all at one time. Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Um, how many, how many pairs, well, how often do you get shipments in? We never know. I mean, if you, uh, yeah. on a, on a weekly basis, let's say, or, or I'm sorry, not weekly, but per year, an annual basis, uh, if you had to yeah. average it. Yeah, I so we get usually when before COVID, we were getting on average about three three shipments a month. Okay. So we would get three shipments a month. So we were getting just just say somewhere in the neighborhood of about twelve hundred pairs. Okay. Well, once COVID hit, since we're buying store returns and since a lot of people were not out buying shoes retail, right? We saw a real drop off in the number that we were getting. It was probably from March probably from 1st of April until sometime in June, we didn't get any shipment. Wow. And so it was actually, it it wasn't that bad because it allowed us an opportunity to kind of to deplete some of our inventory. Mm -hmm. And then we started getting shipments again in June. And now it's starting to get back to where it was. We're starting to see, you know, a pickup in how many shipments that we're getting. So, which tells us is people are getting back out to work. Right. People are starting to buy shoes more. Right. And as the, as the general public starts buying more shoes from Alan and Emmons, then our returns, we start getting our returns again. Right. Well, that, mm-hmm. that leads me to another question. Um, this one's from Robert Wilson. He says, does, uh, does your volume of sales speak about the quality trend of Allen Edmonds themselves? Uh, you want me to answer that, Steve, or do you want to? Uh, oh, you can go ahead. And, I can add to it. Okay. Um, I think I understand this correctly in saying that um, I think I speak for Steve as well. We think that Allen Edmonds is still just a top quality brand. Mm-hmm. Um, other people may disagree with us, but um, we're, we feel very fortunate to represent them in a, in a small way by mm-hmm. selling their store returns on eBay. And um, yeah, so I don't, I don't really, 
I can't really say anything more than that. I don't know, Steve, you want to say something, but. Well, Doug, I don't know that I understand the question. Um, how do you interpret that question, Doug? Well, the way I look at it, um, you know, I, I've been I've been buying Allen Edmonds shoes for years, and as someone that is a, you know, I'm a I'm a manufacturer, and you know, of course, I don't deal with the same volume of in production that Allen Ed, that a company like Allen Edmonds does. Okay, uh, I, I don't know how many shoes they they make a month. I don't know how many shoes they make a year, uh, and it's really difficult for for me to sit back and speculate what their percentage of returns is. Um, but again, I mean, you know, the, just to take a blanket snapshot of returns versus, uh, amount of shoes or or number of pairs of shoes that are created, that still does not give you, give a person any kind of indication as to what, their quality is because returns can be made for any reason, right. you know, right. just because, you know, so, uh, I would assume that the vast majority of returns that Allen Ed, that a company like Allen Edmonds gets is going to be m- the wrong size, you know, that somebody orders their, their shoes online uh, or calls up right. Allen Edmonds and makes the order, and they order the wrong size, but they wear the the, the shoes for a few days. There may be a you know the, the soles of them may get a little little marks in them, but now Allen Edmonds can't sell those as new. So I'm assuming that's the kind of shoes that you guys are getting back. Yeah, I think because all all of the last that Allen Edmonds are constructed on people. Not everybody are familiar with what last fit them best. Mm-hmm. So you're right. I think the majority of the returns are fit issues just because of that. Because, you know, just because you wear a, a nine and a half D in one doesn't mean you're going to wear a nine and a half D in another style. Exactly. So, so you know, trying, trying to pin down uh, whether or not their quality is, is, every bit is what it, every bit as good as what it used to be or are they slipping – you know, I, I don't think that's a question that could be answered without having more data. I agree. You know, I agree. Um, so, uh, sorry, Mark, um, or, or sorry, Robert, we couldn't answer that question. You know, it just needs more data, you know, knowing exactly where the returns are coming from and for what reasons uh, to be able to narrow down whether or not it's it's a quality control issue or anything like that. I, I, and like I said, I doubt seriously that it is quality control. And, and you know, everybody, every manufacturer out there uh, has issues from time to time with quality, and every manufacturer has employees that may show up and not have the best day and, and screw things up, and sometimes those things get out there in the wild. But... Overall, in general, I just I just don't see that that you know, especially given the the shoes that I see you guys selling on eBay, especially from mm-hmm. the shoes that I've bought and and bought for yeah. other people, I don't see any issues with them. I've only had one pair that that even looked like it could have been a factory second. Mm-hmm. So good to hear. <laughs> well. Uh, let me ask you this: Do you guys uh, do you guys reject some of the returns yourselves? Um, in other words, when when Alan Edmonds sends you a batch of uh, or, or uh, a truckload of shoes, uh, do you go through them? And, and is there ever a time when you reject anything that they've sent you? Uh, not, re- not really. We yeah we we basically take what they send us, and and Doug we. For the most part, we're really happy with the quality of shoes that they send us. But some, a lot of times, well, it just depends. I mean, to, to answer your question, there have been shipments in the past. I mean, this is like years ago. I remember one shipment in particular. Mm-hmm. It seemed like every one of the shoes that we got were just, you know, really in really, really bad shape. Mm-hmm. And I think back then, Alan Edmonds had a little bit more liberal return policy. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of those shoes looked like they'd been worn for years, and we just knew we weren't going to make any money on those shoes. Right. So 
<clears throat> we contacted Alan Emmons, and they actually um, negotiated. They actually um, adjusted the price, and we were very right. happy with that. But it's been years since we we've had shipments like that. Though so most of the shoes that we get now are like you described. They're lightly worn. They're in really good shape, and you know, with the trend of COVID, with with COVID, people have gone more casual. Mm-hmm. And so, because let's face it, I mean, most people are working out of their house. Right. They weren't working in the offices, and so our sneaker sales really went up. And since that's what people were buying, we started to get more sneakers from Allen Edmonds. Mm-hmm. So you're going to probably see more sneakers on our site now than you than you did a year ago, and that's just because. Mm-hmm. That's what people are, are wearing, you know, well, now when they're working remotely. That that makes sense. That makes sense. And and yeah. you know, uh, I would assume that that the chances of you you guys opening up a box, if if Allen Edmonds has tightened down on uh, their return policy and not been well, not really tightened down, but become less liberal with the things that they're willing to accept back. Um, you know, I, I would assume that they're going to have, or you guys would actually have less issues. Yeah. Long-term. I'm just rambling here. Forgive me. Um, (laughs) Well, can I add something to that question that you asked about the, um, if we reject or, you know, if we get some, can we return them or, yeah, absolutely. I don't know if I understood it right, but, um, so we take everything that they send us. We can't pick and choose and then send back the ones that we don't want. I don't know if, that was the question he was asking or not, but there are some, some shoes that are just flat out worn a lot harder than other ones. And mm-hmm. we don't put them on our site. So we donate those. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, we, we donate them. Well, the that, ones and- that we just don't feel like, you know, are good enough high enough quality to make it on our eBay store. And, and that makes, that makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, all the way around, you know, it's less headaches later on down the road. If a customer buys a pair and they, they didn't see something on there or whatever, and then all of a sudden you've got to deal with a with a return on it from an eBay customer. And if you just don't put those those uh, more well loved shoes out there to begin with, you don't you don't have to worry about those things coming back. So right. Uh, let's see. Mark Gillum asks. He says. Uh, do your return? Well, we actually covered this already. Do your returns come from the stores, the factory, or both? So, I mean, if you want, it, it, I think we already covered that. But if you want to expand on it a little, so I'm not sure. I think we get everything that gets filtered into Allen Edmonds. But mm-hmm. The mystery that we do not know is what all the what are all the retail stores that ship back to Allen Edmonds. Right. So I'll just answer that by saying everything that the retailers ship back to the Allen Edmonds corporate, that's what we buy. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And and whatever they have, you don't know what it's going to be until you actually get it in and sort through it and everything. Um, yeah, that makes sense. All right. And, uh, and, and, no, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Doug, I was just going to add that, you know, in addition to shoes, we're talking we're talking shoes now. But we also get the Allen Edmund store return belts. I was just about to right. ask you that. Uh, yeah. Any any other accessories other than than the belts, or is there a possibility in the future that you guys would start picking up some other accessories? I think they sell wallets too and stuff like that. Yeah, we've actually awesome. been trying briefcases. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. they quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, so you... we we've actually been inquiring about that, and you know we would love to have the opportunity someday to be able to also sell that merchandise. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do do the Wood War Shoe Trees. And for those of you that have been um, wanting to get medium and large size, we've been out of medium and large for quite some time, but we wanted to wait until, you know, the pandemic kind of settled down before we ordered more. And so we just, we just placed an order for a bunch of shoe trees today. So we're going to be fully stocked with our Wood War Shoe Trees um, in the next couple of weeks. We should have all those online. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Mark also asks, he says, well, um, how long have you been affiliated with Alan Edmonds in this fashion, and are there others like yourself? Well, we already went over uh, how long you've been doing this, since 2001, you said, right? Right. That's correct. So are there any, is there anybody else that's doing basically the same thing, buying from Alan Edmonds? 
Uh, no, we're the only ones that are buying directly from Allen Edmonds. Now, as you know, if you go to eBay and if you type in Allen Edmonds, you're going to have the last check. I think you're going to have over 30,000 items pop up. Wow. Well, we only have 20, about 2,300 right now currently online. So there are a lot of people that are selling Allen Edmonds products on eBay. Mm -hmm. And well, so Steve, maybe you should mention when we started, like how many hits would you get on eBay whenever you would type in Allen Edmonds? Yeah, it was like 900. It was it was really, really low. 2,000 was the high. Mm -hmm. So when we first started and you would type in Allen Edmonds, there might be two, but there may have been 2,000 on there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's getting more competitive with us too because there's so many more people, you know, that are selling Allen Edmonds on there. Right. Mm -hmm. that, um, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, keeping in the same vein of eBay here, um, Patrick uh, Feinstein, I guess that's how you pronounce his last name. He says, I just bought a pair of boots uh, from you guys over the weekend. Uh, I would like to ask him about customer service and how, how you can be a trusted seller in, a, in such a non-traditional retail market like eBay. It's not like a storefront where you build a relationship with people that physically come into your store. So how do you build that trust and credibility online? Through I think eBay? that's a really good question. Um, yeah. Steve, do you want yeah. to answer that? Um, sure, I can answer it. And then, Andy, you can add to it because customer service is probably the most important thing that we can offer our customers other than great products. But Alan Edmonds offers the products. We, we just offer the customer service and how we handle our customers. And mm -hmm. um, that's one thing I think that we're really proud of, the fact that we've been on eBay for so long and it, it, it could have changed within the hour that we're, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. But last look, we still have 100% positive feedback. And I'll tell you, that's not an easy accomplishment. No, it's if, not. Um, if you, and Doug, I'm sure you can attest because you, you have an eBay store as well, because a lot of times there's customers that'll buy things and they'll pull the trigger and they'll go ahead and leave feedback before you even know that they had a problem with the product. Exactly. And we feel very fortunate that we don't have customers like that. Mm -hmm. They're understanding. If we make a mistake, I'll give you an example. We just accidentally shipped two customers each other's pair of boots <laughs> that they bought. Okay. So we got them, somehow we got the shipping label mixed up mm. and each one of those products went to the, uh, the wrong customer. <laughs> well, as soon as it was identified, both of those customers were very understanding mm -hmm. and we, we emailed them a shipping label so that they could ship the one that they got over to the person that, that was supposed to get it. And they were both cooperative and they were just very forgiving right. of us making that mistake. And if you, you know, ship out as many pairs we ship out. I mean, you're going to make mistakes, and we're just we're just happy that we have customers that are understanding and and make our job a little easier. So, customer service is key is key for us. It really is. It, it should be key for a lot of places. And I and I tell you, Allen Edmonds themselves have fantastic customer service, and mm -hmm. you know any any business out there would do well to look at their customer service and and learn from it. And when you've got a good a good business that you're al you're already affiliated with this good business that has such good customer service. I would imagine that it's it's pretty easy and and you probably have taken cues from them, huh? Well, I'll tell you, Doug. We're, you know, we're representing Allen Edmonds, and so mm -hmm. if if we were giving really bad customer service and Allen Edmonds saw that, because I'm sure that they can get on it. Well, they they can because we're we're required to give them our our eBay store name. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they get on there and they, they check us out. And I'm sure if we were doing them a disservice, we would have been yanked right. from selling these returns a exactly. long time ago. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I was just actually... And something a, else is... Go okay, ahead. Doug. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I was, just, I was just on eBay earlier today and I looked you guys up and you guys are over 30,000 uh, positive feedbacks on there. 100% uh, positive feedback with well over 30,000. I thought I was doing good at, at close to 2000 and no, you guys, you guys have me blown away, but I do know that it, <laughs> it, uh, eBay can be challenging. Um, it can be very challenging to maintain that, that hundred percent positive feedback ratio. And, right. 
um, yes. that it's, it does speak volumes to have that many positive reviews uh, and, and maintain all the while maintaining that hundred percent positive. So, um, well, thank you. Uh, thank you. I, oh. I was just going to add that um, we've always read our feedback, mm-hmm. um, like every day or so. We we were reading that feedback, but now we've started to actually reply to the feedback because eBay now gives sellers the opportunity to reply back to feedback, which I think is really nice. Mm-hmm. And so it's nice just to kind of give that little interaction with our customers at the end of the transaction to thank them for the the nice feedback and appreciate. Uh, show them our appreciation for their business. So exactly. that's just something else. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes perfect sense. I mean, uh, I know for my sharpening stone business at one point in time, I used to, uh, I had some, uh, cut index cards. They were just solid index cards. And, uh, you know, I actually used to, uh, hand write on there, you know, thank you for your purchase, Doug, something just as simple as that. And, and it goes a long way. It, it, it does. It goes mm-hmm. a long, long way. Um, let's see. Um, Jeff Hayes asks, uh, do you guys take Alan Edmonds trade-ins? <laughs> Andy, do you want that one or do you want me to do it? Go ahead. So the answer to that is, is we're busy enough with 2,300 <laughs> pair online. So, so we did get asked that. Yeah. <laughs> we get asked yeah. that a lot. Like probably three times a week I get a message. From somebody asking that. Yeah, I mean, it's it. Well, we're not talking used cars here. I mean, they are shoes after all, you know. Uh, uh, maybe there's someone else, someone that does, but you know, we've got our hands full with what we're getting right now. Yeah. And, exactly. Uh, we do not take. We don't take trade in. Exactly. We actually have a longtime customer who's uh, he's a retired surgeon up in near DC in Falls Church, Virginia. Mm-hmm. And he's been a customer of ours for years, and a big customer, like, buys a lot. Mm-hmm. But um, he's retired now, and he sent me a text this morning and said, would you guys be interested in, like, selling my shoes and um, just giving me a cut of the profit or whatever, you know? But I'm like, he, he, he's got a lot of shoes. I know he does. But, I, like, right now, we just can't really handle any more than what right. we have. So, yeah. Right. Well, and, and like I said, I mean, just because you're – just because you're you're selling factory returns and and technically they are technically used not and, and in most cases not really used but uh you know it's like they people sometimes think you know that uh you're you're open to buying their used shoes and no mm-hmm. no that it 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 just you can't you just can't do it and turn a profit at the end of the day you know um let's see um 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 um, mark let me see was it mark no here we go brian brian rodino he says he wants uh wants me to tell you guys and it it just goes without uh, I, i i actually you know I think you guys know how much you guys mean to everyone in the Allen Edmonds enthusiast group. And we all, you know, myself included, definitely, we all want to say thank you for what you guys do and being there for us and, and providing the, the, the service that you do and the customer service that you do. Thank you. Well, that was very nice. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you guys. I mean, listen, Without without the Allen Edmonds enthusiasts, without the um, our Allen Edmonds supporters out there, we wouldn't have a business to run. And so we're grateful. We're grateful for all of our customers and all of you guys as well. We just hope that we can continue to offer you guys a good product, great customer service, and we can have this partnership moving forward for years to come. Yeah, and I and yeah, go ahead. Well, with that said, uh, we've kind of been chatting about maybe like starting a, a little YouTube channel or something, and And, like, I don't know what kind of content people would like to see, but it might be kind of fun just to, you know, when we get a shipment in, just to open a box up on camera or something and show everybody what's in the boxes. I don't know. I think those kinds of things would be great. If there's ideas on content. Yeah, if there's ideas of content that people on AEE would like to see, we'd be interested in, in talking about it. So, yeah. 
so for anybody out there, um, you know, write in the comment section below. Uh, when you when you watch this, write in the comment section below. Give a, let's give uh, let's give Steve and Andy some encouragement to start their own YouTube channel. I think it'd be a good idea. I mean, you know, they had the they had the show Storage Wars, where people would go around bidding on you know, imp- well, yeah, on, uh-huh. on storage can storage units and storage containers and and. You know, people would watch for the, not so much the, I don't think most people watched for the uh, the bidding and the auction part of it or anything like that. I think they mostly watched it because they wanted to see what kind of neat stuff they were going to get when they opened it up. And I think you guys would, <laughs> would be kind of in that same bo- in that same league where, you know, if you want to film, like you said, opening up the boxes and seeing what it is, wow, what is this that we have to sell? Oh, these are different, you know, catch your reactions and, and you know, walk us, walk everyone through the process from start to finish on things. I think that would be fantastic. I think it would make for great I'm content on it. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I'm open to it. We just kind of have to figure out like what would work best and what, what would be most interesting for people to see. And mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. A- a- introduce us to your cobbler that does the work on the shoes. Um, you know, there's all there's all, there's all kinds of things. Uh, I know Steve Dudockley, and he's got uh, uh, Beto's Leatherworks here on YouTube. Um, you know, he posts lots of videos about shoe repairs, and he does great with it. And a lot of people love his channel. Preston Soto with the Elegant Oxford. People love his channel. They 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 just, I think. I think that the Allen Edmonds shoes and the higher end shoes. It's not just about a pair of shoes that you're going to stick on your feet and go about your everyday your everyday life i think it it is more of 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 a thought process and a lifestyle that people they get engrossed in and they get enamored with it and and they just they like immersing themselves in it fully and i think that's why mm-hmm. steve's channel has been so uh, steve dudoclean's channel has been so so successful same thing with preston um you know, uh, they're both wonderful too. They're both wonderful at what they do. Exactly. Yeah, we have a lot of respect yeah. for both of them. Yeah. And Doug, we've actually done collaborations with um, Steve. We've done collaborations with Preston. Mm-hmm. And there's also somebody else that we recently did a collaboration with. You may have seen his video, but it's Michael Baldinger. Um, he had bought a pair of sneakers off us that were miscovered. Mm-hmm. And he actually did a Pantina on them, and they look really good when he finished that up. I, I'm not um, familiar with his channel. I'll have to look him up. Um, but yeah, collaborations with with create with other YouTube creators, fantastic way to grow your channel, and also get get ideas from from them. Uh, you know, especially when you first. I think his year. channel is. Uh, I think Michael's channel is M B Shoe Doc. I think that's it. D O C M B Shoe D O C I think. Let's see. O E D O C M B Shoe Doc. Yeah. Oh yeah, there I he is. There he is. Yep. I'm gonna have to subscribe to his channel, actually. Yeah, he's on Alan Emmons Enthusiast as well. He does a nice job. Yeah, I just sub to his channel. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the thing to do. And, and like I said, I mean, if you guys are are looking to, to get into the YouTube channel and, and, and do that kind of stuff, you know, look, I'm always here. I can, uh, uh, granted I'm, I am nowhere near as, as uh, my channel is nowhere near as big as say Preston's or Steve's channel is Steve Dudoclean. Um, but you know, I'm always here to, to, to help you guys in any way I can. Should you decide to, uh, to start up the, the YouTube channel, just let me know. I'm more than happy to help. And I know Steve and Preston are, would be more than happy to help as well. I'm going to go out on a limb and speak for them. Well, (laughs) they, they, they always are, Doug, they always are. Anytime I reach out to either one of those gentlemen, Mm -hmm. they are always there to answer any of my questions. In fact, I was going to put a plug in for Steve there was a, we had a pair of boots that they had a pretty big tear on them that our shoe repair guy, he didn't, he didn't think that he, he was wanting to touch that. And so I sent them over to Steve 
Mm-hmm. And Steve did a wonderful job on them. And he, you know, we paid for the shipping to get them to him. Mm-hmm. And he fixed them for us and sent them back to us. And they just look really, really good. So he does top-notch work. He really, he really, really does. And, and uh, he, you know, I think I told you before, my wife and I do leather work. And, uh, you know, my my one of the two of us will make something like a wallet or something like that. And uh, she'll post that, like, especially when she posts a, a picture of a wallet on, on, uh, Facebook and, and, uh, Steve will come in there and he'll critique it. And it, it just, she just, she gets so, uh, overwhelmed with joy when, when Steve comes back and says, nice job, clean stitching, you did yeah. a good work, you know? And, and because he's not going to be like, you know, really forthcoming, like, like, you know, gushing with compliments or anything, but you know, you did right when he comes back in and he says it's clean work, you know, nice. uh, yeah. but, but he is, he's so professional and, and he does beautiful work. So does Preston with the shoe shines and everything. Um, you know, and, and yeah, for me too, I mean, they've been more than happy to, to do collaboration videos with me to help me to help my channel grow as well. So like I said, I'm more than happy okay. to, to step out on a limb here and and offer their help to you, um, because I know they 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 know you guys and I know they would want you you guys to succeed with it as well. We can't thank everybody enough. Right? Yeah, totally. Thank you very much. Well, our pleasure, and it's been my pleasure to have you guys on the, on the channel today. Um, today is. Thursday the 15th um you know we're we're actually recording this on Thursday I've got to do the editing on this video uh and tomorrow this should be up by tomorrow evening at the latest and again I want to thank Andy and Steve for for coming on here and talking to me about and talking to us all about the Allen Edmonds shoes and you know their process and their role in in with the Allen Edmonds shoes well, Thank you, you, very appreciate much. you. Well, my pleasure. And um, uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. And y'all take care.